<gasps> Sir, I think I've located the evil wild hog that we've been after. He's just really far out there. Well, what are you waiting for? Grab a sniper rifle and get that hog! Sir, yes sir! <laughs> Uh, too little. Too heavy. You know what? This one looks good. <laughs> Sir, I'm in position. What are you waiting for? Well, looking down the scope, the hog appears to have barricaded himself behind a piece of steel. Take the shot, soldier. We don't have time to waste. I really don't think it's gonna go through. I said take the shot. If you insist. Dang it. What's the matter, soldier? Sir, I must have hit the piece of steel because the hog just ran away. It must not have went through. You picked the wrong sniper. Now another box of ammo's gone. I can't believe this. Have you ever wondered just how much steel a sniper rifle can penetrate? Well, after this video, I hope you wonder less because I'm not shooting every caliber out there. Anyways, I have a pretty big assortment, so we're going to go ahead and start small and work our way up to a pretty massive sniper rifle. This is my shield. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't think there are many like it, but anyways, it's made out of solid quarter inch steel flats, so it should keep you protected from just about any ricochet out there. Guys, there's something I gotta come clean with. Steel Sled V1 just didn't make it. Anyways, say hello to Steel Sled 2.0. This bad boy should be able to handle just about anything out there. Check out those staircase notches right there. Those are for all the different thicknesses of steel. And along with a backing like this, it's not going to bend anymore like the first version. So gone are the days of Steel Sled V1. You will be remembered, but not for very long. Anyways, how's about we start our testing off with a quarter inch mild steel plate? I was a pretty big fan of the spray paint from the last test, so how's about we carry on with it? Alright, I think we're good to go. It's already looking way better than Steel Sled V1. Up first, we got the 17 HMR. It's not necessarily known for being a sniper rifle, but I'm sure if you talk to some squirrels or prairie dogs, they would say otherwise. Anyways, it's not that big, so I'm really skeptical that it's going to penetrate a quarter inch, but let's go ahead and see. First things first, let's figure out just how much velocity the 17 HMR is putting out so that we can figure out exactly how much energy it has at the muzzle. Out of this 17 inch barrel right here, the 17 HMR averaged 2575 feet a second. So obviously it seems like it has enough velocity to penetrate, but the real question is, does it have enough energy to penetrate a quarter inch at 50 yards? Let's go ahead and find out. Now that one barely even scratched the surface. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that the 17 HMR is not going to penetrate a quarter inch. Up next we got the 6.5 Grendel. It's way bigger than the 17 HMR, but in the grand scheme of things it's really not that big of a cartridge. It is however compared to the 308 in terms of ballistics, so let's see how it does on these steel plates. Well I definitely can't complain about that standard deviation right there. It looks like we were averaging 2609 feet a second. And what did I tell you? Look at that nice clean pass through right there. Up next we got the good old 308 with the classic 168 grain Sierra Match King. This cartridge has been used in military sniper rifles for quite some time now, so let's see how it does to the steel. Out of this 16 inch barrel right here with a suppressor, the 308 is over 300 feet a second less than what the box claimed. It averaged 2382 feet a second, but the standard deviation was really good at 9.5. Another clean pass through like we expected. Check that out. Since the 308 went through, I'm pretty sure we know the magnums are going to go through, so should I even waste the rounds? Okay, I will just for you guys. Up next, we got a pretty big boy. The 7mm Remington Magnum. Now, 7mm bullets have extremely high ballistic coefficients, so their long-range capabilities are definitely there. Now let's see how it does to the steel. Out of this 26 inch barrel, the 7mm Remington Magnum was going an average of 3065 feet a second with a standard deviation of 8.6. That's pretty good. I think we all knew we were going to get another clean pass through on that one as well. Alright, it's time for the big boy. The last and biggest cartridge that we're going to be testing is the 338 Lapu Magnum. Now in terms of sniping, it really does not need an introduction, but let's see how it does on those steel plates. I know I only shot one out of this 26 inch barrel, but the thing is, I really don't want to waste $20 just to figure out the velocity. Anyways, that one was 2744 feet a second. Oh, 
All right, I accidentally hit one of the other holes, but I think we all know it's going to go through a quarter inch, so I'm not going to waste another round. It's time for a 3 8 inch plate. Let's go ahead and spray paint it. All right, I think we're good to go. But before we carry on, I want to give a big thanks to Midway USA for sponsoring my channel. I've been shopping at Midway USA for almost a decade now, and they've been a great company over the years in my experience. Anyways, they have just about everything hunting, outdoors, and farm related that you could need, so I definitely recommend checking them out if you haven't already. Obviously, the 17 HMR is out of the running, but we still got four other cartridges to test on this 3 inch plate, so let's get to it. Stopped. Cold. Look at that, it just left a dent on the steel. I think the 308 is going to do a little better, but let's go check it out. Oh man, check that out. That's pretty strange though, because out of all the 308 rounds that I've shot out of that rifle, they all went through a 3 8 inch with relative ease. Let's check out the back. Oh, check that out. It looks like it was about to shear off the back. It just didn't have quite enough gusto to get through there. Well, that was a first for the 308, but like I said, it was also 300 feet a second under what the box was claiming. Anyways, we got two more big boys, so I think they both are going through that 3 8 inch plate, but let's go check it out. I'd say that one went straight through. How about you guys? I think we might have a good chance of half inch with this one. I think it's safe to assume, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. I'm pretty sure I could see that one through the scope. Yep, that is a massive hole right there. Up next we got the half inch mild steel plate. Now that opening shot was already with the 308, so we already know that's out of the way, but let's go ahead and spray paint it. There we go. If I was a betting man, I would say they're both going through a half inch, but let's go ahead and see. Oh my gosh, walking up on it. I think we did. Oh my gosh, we did it. That's the first time we made it through a half inch steel plate. Guys, I am so happy. But the thing is, I also may have centered it on this post right here on the first shot, so uh, that's also not very good. I guess that none of these steel sleds are long for this world. Guys, this is the first time I've ever said this, but we're finally moving up to the three-quarter inch plate. Both of them went through the half inch, so we'll see what happens. This thing is freaking massive. If they can clear this, then they're going all the way up to the one inch, but don't get your hopes up. Let's go ahead and spray it real quick. Good to go. This is what I'm predicting. The 338's gonna go through, but I just don't think the seven millimeter has enough energy. We'll see though. Well, it looks like my first prediction was correct. Now this next one could be the last shot of the day, so let's go ahead and check it out. All right, give me some slack. I got one of two correct, but anyways, check out that bullet right there. It looks pretty similar to the 7mm Remington Magnum other than being a bigger crater, so we'll have to see which one actually penetrated deeper. Anyways, I'm really glad that I was using a protective case on my camera right here, because if not, that spalling would have eaten that up. I really thought that the 338 was going to have a lot more gusto, but anyways, let's go back to the bench and see which one penetrated deeper. Because it's time to grind! I'm not gonna lie, other than the crater being wider on the 338 Lapua, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference between these two. Anyways, let's get on to measuring. Fourteen thousandths. Guys, if you can believe it, the 338 Lapua literally only penetrated fourteen thousandths deeper than the 7mm Remington Magnum. I guess it kind of makes sense though, since the 7mm Remington Magnum was putting out over 300 feet a second faster than the Lapua. But with all that extra kinetic energy, I would have thought that it would have been a different story. If I had access to armor-piercing projectiles for both of these cartridges though, I'm pretty sure it would have been a way bigger difference. Anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. Bananas. <laughs>